I'm Lance Loya, and you're listening to the Good Teammate Podcast, the audio version of my popular Teammate Tuesday blog about the art of being a good teammate. Season 6, Episode 5, Don't Panic. In exploring the art of being a good teammate, one of the most fascinating elements I've observed is how rarely good teammates panic. Now to clarify, good teammates encounter anxiety the same as everyone else. Their lives are not void of stressful events. They contend with fear, apprehension, and the gamut of stressors. Yet they possess an uncanny ability to not panic during these encounters. The American Psychological Association explains anxiety as an emotion characterized by feelings of tension and worry that stem from an individual anticipating impending danger or misfortune. Anxiety is a natural human response to the real or perceived presence of threat. Who hasn't experienced pins and needles, a churning in their stomach, or an increased heart rate when stressed? Panic, on the other hand, is a sudden, intense reaction involving terror, confusion, and irrational behavior. In layman's terms, panic happens when individuals lose mental control over the moment. I have yet to ascertain why good teammates project a quiet confidence when others panic. Is it because they're more comfortable with their role? Is it because they're more prepared? Is it because they're more action-oriented? Is it a combination of all those things? Eh, probably. What I have noticed is that good teammates tend to employ several strategies that keep them from panicking. For instance, number one, they set damage parameters. Good teammates immediately establish what the ideal resolution would be and what the worst-case scenario could be. Then they accept both premises without obsessing over either. Imagine losing your phone at the store. Best case scenario? A kind customer found it and turned it into customer service. Worst case scenario? Someone took it and now you have to buy a new one. Both scenarios are manageable. The stress of the unknown can be paralyzing. By setting parameters, Good teammates contain the unknown. They recognize the ends of the spectrum and realize that they're capable of handling wherever the outcome falls on that spectrum. Number two, they focus on solutions instead of reactions. Panic often comes from fixating on less urgent questions. How did this happen? Who's to blame? What will others think when they find out? In the preceding example, Rather than focusing on how your phone got lost, who caused you to be distracted, or why you were rushed to leave the store, concentrate on what needs to be done to solve the issue, like finding someone to call your phone, activating your lost phone mode, or calling your phone carrier. There'll be a time to analyze what went wrong and who might be to blame, but that time doesn't have to be the present juncture. Number three, they break down the issue into smaller, more manageable problems. Good teammates choose to view the big problem as nothing more than a series of small, solvable problems. For instance, you need to A. Determine if your phone is lost or stolen. B. Activate your Find My Phone app. C. Contact your phone carrier. And D. Let your family know you don't have access to your phone in case there's an emergency. This approach causes the bigger, seemingly overwhelming problem to become far less daunting because all those tasks are achievable. Panic can be debilitating for individuals and disastrous for teams. By utilizing these three strategies, good teammates keep their anxiety from spiraling into panic. As always, good teammates care, good teammates share, good teammates listen. Go be a good teammate.
To discover more about the art of being a good teammate, visit CoachLoya.com.